Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Life Boost. I'm excited for all of you guys to come onto my podcast and listen to us. My podcast can be heard anywhere you listen to them. I appreciate my guest speaker, Riley Compton, coming onto my show. It'll be interesting to hear her perspectives on overall health and how to achieve your goals. At such a young age, Riley Compton has achieved several accomplishments and has made significant contributions. Her story will inspire and motivate others to follow their dreams. Welcome to my show, Riley. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me, Ryan, especially all the way from Canada. Yeah, it's a bit of a distance, but I'm really excited to have the opportunity to speak with you about overall health. It's going to be very exciting. Could you tell us a bit about your childhood and how it led you to the military and and explain your awesome story? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in Carmel, Indiana, uh, so Midwest all the way. Uh, I had very lucky and blessed to have such a strong family Um, My dad was a professional baseball player, um, so I had that athletic-ness from him as soon as I could walk. And my mom, on the other hand, was she reminds me every day, she was very athletic in high school. She did sports as well, but she was more of the academic bug. She she grew up pretty poor, and the way she was able to get herself into college and uh, graduate school was because of her grades and how hard she worked. So those two values of being strong in sport but also strong academically – was really ingrained in me as a child. So um, grew up playing softball and basketball primarily. Um, went over to softball starting in high school only. Uh, was with a really awesome travel program that was able to put me in front of college coaches. Uh, my sophomore year, I accepted a college scholarship to George Washington University in D.C. So that is what is going to lead me into meeting a recruiter um, about – two weeks or so into campus. So a little 18 year old Riley was walking around and met a Marine recruiter and, uh, it worked his pickup lines to get people into the Marine Corps. Uh, you know, I was, I was hooked and I, all I could think about is, wow, I'm so excited to start this new process in my life. Called my parents back at home and said, Hey, you know, I may not have started my softball season, but, uh, I'm ready to join the Marine Corps. And they were like, what in the world? So that's kind of how my childhood led me to the Marine Corps. Super interesting, right? Where you got your life and you went to a very high end school and you were able to go through softball and many different several accomplishments to get to where you are today, right? Considering that there's only 5% of uh, females that are in the military throughout the United States. It's a very small statistic that has been shown. And I just wanted to dive deep into that. Uh, Like, do you suffer any issues with that or is there any struggles around that? Yeah. So in the Marine Corps, only 5% of officers are females. And that is such a small percentage. And there has been issues that I've had because of that. You know, I've had people question my leadership style because I am a female and I don't curse and I don't really yell um, if I don't have to. And I approach situations maybe differently. And I have had people be weary of whether or not that was going to be effective in the Marine Corps and what they perceived me as that Marines wouldn't take me seriously, especially working with so many men in the service. So I've run into some issues based off of people's perception and what that was going to look like. But to be completely honest, like I felt completely supported the whole time. And there's so many men that will come to me, male Marines of all different kinds of ranks and be like, no, ma'am, you know, it's really great having you on board. You've been able to make a different kind of impact because of your leadership style um, that has been really receptive to certain Marines. So Very interesting, right? And what's one lesson in the job that you could explain to us that has taught you something at, at some point in your lifestyle? Like, what is that tip that we could take in uh, from being in the military? Yeah. So the biggest tip that I would say is it's not about you. It's about the people around you and about that team atmosphere and culture. And I learned that right away at officer candidate school immediately when we were doing different exercises and I would be punished for someone else who made an error or a mistake. And I was so confused, but because I was in a leadership position, if they, if they made an error instead of them getting yelled at, it was me who was getting yelled at. And at 18 years old, I didn't understand right away but I quickly, um, ever since I've actually been in the Marine Corps, 
realize that, that I need to make sure that I'm squared away as a leader to then make sure that other people are. And I need to take extreme ownership for the things that happened to my Marines. And instead of pointing fingers like, well, that's your fault, you know, as a leader, like that's on me as well. Even if I didn't know, then that's my fault for not knowing. So I think something that we could see happen a lot more in today's society is this extreme ownership concept of taking accountability as leaders for people below us who make mistakes as well. That's really good advice, trying to take accountability for yourself and really ensuring that you're making consistent goals for your future. And I find that a lot of people don't have that mental resiliency to even do that in the first place, right? So what are some good tips that you could give us to try to enhance mental resiliency? Because that's something that a lot of people struggle with. And it seems that you're really killing it when it comes to that. So what would be your suggestions? Yeah, that's so funny. I'm so glad it seems like I'm killing it because it's a struggle every day. And that's what I want to say to everyone. You know, when you wake up every day, there's different kinds of struggles that happen. For me, I'm a really strong Christian. So where I'm rooted in my mental resiliency is in my faith foundation, where I feel like I'm plugged into my community, my church. I have the Bible that I read in the mornings to get me in the right focus. And I pray a lot of times when I feel defeated or don't know how I'm going to conquer a task. But in addition to that, like the community aspect is something I want to hit on a lot is I feel like I'm very supportive. I call it my tribe. I have a tribe of close individuals that I know have my back, look out for me. And when I feel mentally defeated or crushed or questionable of where I'm at, I have these people that I can lean on to help build me back up and give me the advice that I need maybe when I'm not seeing clearly. And having that community, having my tribe is why I feel like I'm able to be successful and seek advice from other people and knowing that I can't do this or anything, let alone at that on my own. Yeah. And you're going through so many different things throughout your personal life and throughout your work life. And there's so many different things that you have to do to challenge yourself every day to make yourself a better individual, right? So it's really incredible that you're able to manage that and be able to understand that nobody's perfect and that you got to figure out ways and strategies to make yourself successful, right? Because for you, it works in that aspect, but for other people, it could be different, right? So it's good to identify that you just need to continuously keep working on yourself to try to make yourself a better individual overall, right? So it's really interesting. I know that you are a part of the bobsled team for the USA team. And I just wanted to ask you a few questions in regards to that, right? What is your day-to-day regimen as a competitive bobsled pilot? What is the life of that? Yes. So I'm on Team USA Developmental Bobsled. Um, I've been doing bobsled for about two years now, a little over two years, and the regiment looks so different day to day, especially depending on what season I am. Um, for anyone who watched the Winter Olympics, the word winter is needed um, to participate in bobsled. So between roughly March and October, there's no ice anywhere. It's too warm. It's summer. So there's no way to practice my sport. And then October through March, depending on what time in March, there is ice, we're able to train. So I'm a pilot. I sit in the front seat. I'm navigating the bobs like down the track. So the practice that I need, I'm not able to get half of the year. So my day-to-day regimen looks different. And also being an active duty Marine officer um, adds a whole different layer of complexity of what that looks like. So day-to-day right now and off season, um, I wake up pretty early in the morning, get ready, go to work. Um, and then I do my training in the middle of the day during my lunch break, come back, work extra late, come home, either do my Bible study, cook dinner and literally go to bed. And so it's a rinse repeat cycle of that and making sure that I'm healthy. I'm getting my training in. Um, I'm, I'm communicating with my coaches. I'm doing everything I need to at work. I'm investing in my Marines and I'm taking care of myself. And then in season, obviously I'm in more competition mode, practicing, working remote um, for my job in the Marine Corps and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's a challenge day to day is no day is the same. No day is the same as a Marine Corps officer, let alone as a bobsled athlete. But some of the themes are there where I have to prioritize my health and fitness. I have to prioritize my mental health. I have to prioritize my job and I have to prioritize like 
learning these tracks and being the best athlete that I possibly can to achieve my goals. Yeah, it's it's incredible that you're able to be able to manage that overall lifestyle, right? It's a really important aspect as a competitive athlete, right? And you have to really try to create goals and continuously beat them every single day, right? How do you adjust your lifestyle mm-hmm. for that? Because that's such a hard thing to do for an individual, right? Like how can someone truly adjust to that lifestyle? Yes. The best way I've done it is I break it down into goals. So my dad and I have this saying, and it's called win the day. And what does that look like to win today? And so, for example, I had this overarching goal of wanting to be a 2026 winter Olympian and go to the games and represent my country. That's an absolute dream and goal I have, but it's such an overwhelming goal. It's far away. It's over four years. How am I going to obtain that? And so I like to break my goals into smaller chunks, into smaller chunks. So here's my overall like dream goal. Okay, well, how am I going to get there? Well, and I break that down all the way to what do I need to do to win today to set me up for that goal? And that may look like, hey, today's an active recovery rest day. I need to stretch, take care of my body, make sure I'm getting good sleep. You know, today might be, hey, it's com- my complete off day and I need to be Riley, a person and hang out with my friends, spend time with my husband, go to the beach, do something for myself or, hey, today's a day to grind and you need to get after it. You need to excel. You need to do well at this race, this workout, this whatever. And it looks different, but I focus on the day to day goals that I can obtain So that big overarching goal doesn't seem so big and unattainable. Yeah, it sounds really realistic and it sounds that you have the experience to back yourself up when it comes to this, right? It's it's an incredible feeling to be able to have a sense of accomplishment, but also be able to complete several tasks by yourself and creating those objectives every single day, right? So I think that's truly incredible, right? What's one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? We've talked about a bit about your career in the military. We've talked a bit about your career as a competitive athlete. But what's one important lesson that we could take in? So I think one important lesson that you can take in from all this is you sometimes can defeat yourself before anyone else defeats you. And what I mean by that is when I wanted to be a Marine Corps officer, I had self doubts of whether or not I could obtain that before other people, right? Am I going to be good enough? Can I get myself to that area? I don't even know how to be a Marine. Like I've been an athlete my whole life. I don't have family that has been in the Marine Corps. What does that mean? Am I able to do this and questioning that? Or when it was time to go to bobsled, I was like, can I make this transition? Can I compete with the best in the world? Am I good enough? Am I athletic enough? Do I have what it takes? Can I balance this? And so many times I see people all over the world count themselves out before they even get it a chance because they're fearful or they have some of those questions and they're scared of public failure. They don't want to disappoint. They are comfortable in the sitting that they are now. And an overall theme and why I feel like I've been successful and why doors have been open for me is because I haven't counted myself out. I'm like, you know, if I fail, I fail, but I'm going to go down trying. I'm going to go down swinging and give it everything I have. And I'm going to make someone else tell me no before I tell myself no. And I think if we all have that mentality here, obviously for me, I'm rooted in the Lord and I have confidence there that he's going to open doors and guide me. And so if something's on my heart, I should at least pursue it. But for others, just don't count yourself out before you even try something. And I know as women, sometimes we struggle the most with that of like self-doubt and self-criticism, maybe more than men do. And I just want everyone to be cognizant of that and know that, you know, how do you achieve this dream goal? Well, you start, you start one step at a time, one application at a time, one mile at a time. And you just, and you just keep building. It's really good advice. And I find that people don't have those avenues or they don't think of ways to do that and have the confidence to believe in themselves. And and that's really good advice to take in as an individual, right? And it's good that we're able to share that knowledge to a lot of people and just understand that you got to start somewhere and work your way up as an individual to make yourself better, right? So really good advice on your half, right? Like it was really nice to hear that perspective. What is something that 
you could inspire for people that struggle with mental health. Um, so like if we're diving into mental health now a little bit, cause I talk about mental health for first responders and military, and I know that it's been a huge problem uh, throughout North America. What are some big tips that you could suggest for them to improve their overall lifestyle? Mental health in the Marine Corps or in first responders or anyone that's dealing with trauma is so difficult. And I don't have a answer that will solve everyone's problems or the traumatic events that they may face. You know, I can only offer suggestions, but what I do for me is I have my prayer life and I have my community and my Bible studies and my group of, of women that I'm able to just reflect and be open and honest about the things that I'm experiencing or the trauma that I have or talking about war and what that's like and the grievances that come through that. I think the problem is we, people don't have an outlet and they're not able to turn off from that. So I am First Lieutenant Compton, but I'm also Riley Compton. And there's so many other aspects to myself as there are with first responders, as there are to mi other military branches, even to medical personnel, et cetera, that are dealing with traumatic events constantly. And I think we don't have a good enough job of separating the two that we aren't always our jobs all the time. And with that, we need to have an outlet where we have a safe place to talk about the things that happen. And if you don't have anyone, then I would suggest getting a journal and being able to journal it down and just getting it off of your mind so it's not keeping you up at night, so it's not creating anxiety and long-term depression that you're not able to talk about. That would be my best advice. I think every situation is different. I think every person is different. And depending on your support system, it can look different. Yeah, that's incredible. And it's a good guideline and it's a good way for people to get the help that they need and identify the certain aspects that needs to make sure that they're successful in their day-to-day -day lifestyle, right? And and it's about being real. It's about connecting and trying to connect with the people that you trust and love and really try to create a bond and a connection that you can trust, right? So it's about reaching out to the people that you can connect on a higher level with, not someone that you necessarily go to the bar with, but someone that you can really get down and really speak the truth about yourself, right? And that's a really incredible information, right? And it's it's amazing to hear your perspectives. It's amazing to hear what's been going on in your life as an individual, right? It's very stressful uh, doing everything that you're doing right now, right? You're a competitive athlete. You're in the military, you're doing so many different things that a lot of people would extremely stress over, right? And it's 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 truly incredible of the accomplishments that you've made and and being able to hear it has been incredible. And it's it's awesome that you're very honest and you're straightforward to the point and you're able to articulate and explain it in such a simple way where people all around the world can hear this and really try to make themselves a better individual, right? So I really appreciate your insight and, and I really do appreciate it. One of the biggest things that I really want to talk about is, is talking about your GoFundMe page and talking about some of the awareness about that, right? I'm going to be having it on my website. So if you are interested in taking a look at it, it's going to be on my website at lifeboost.ca, but also I'm going to be sharing it across social media. And I really do find the cause is amazing. And there's a lot of things that people don't understand about the bobsledding industry. And I would like you to dive into that and kind of talk about that and talk about what journey you're going through right now so that we can try to help and support that. Yes. So a lot of times people question, you're a bobsledder. How did you get into that? And that just goes to show, or what is bobsled? It goes to show how small the community is and how few people actually know. And if they see it, they've either seen cool runnings, which is yeah, awesome. hundred percent. <laughs> or two, they watch it on the Olympics every four years and it's in their mind for a day or two and it's out. And because of that, there's not a lot of funding that goes along with that. We're not USA or gymnastics, basketball, these high revenue track and field sports that people have all competed in when they were younger can relate to can watch it and make money, nor are we the professional athletes that have the NBA and then are able to go and just like do the Olympics for funsies. You know, the, the Olympics is what you dream of and it's your culminating event that takes four years to live up to. But with that, there's not a lot of money in the winter sports, 
especially for sponsorships and all those kind of things. And we do the best that we can, but bobs is an expensive sport to put in perspective. A two woman sled is, can be up to $50,000 for just a sled. And that's not going into any of the additional equipment that you need or the travel. Cause majority of the tracks are in Europe or in Asia or across the pond and what it takes to ship that $50,000 $50, sled and all these kinds of stuff. So USA Team USA is not government funded. So we don't get funds from the government in order to compete in the Olympics or get paid to be an athlete like some of the other countries do. So what that means is it comes from within our organization. And within our organization, there's not a lot of money because not a lot of people do it or are even aware of what we're doing. So the beginning stages are self-funded. And that's tough. You know, I'm blessed and fortunate. The USA Bobsled and Skeleton is supporting athletes. They do support me, but they're only able to support to a certain amount. So to get to the Olympics, I have to get my foot in the door. I have to get this equipment. I have to be able to compete and show that I'm competitive so I can be invested in to be on the national team that is funded and taken care of. And that's my goal within these next couple of years is to get there so I can go to the Olympics. So I, I started this GoFundMe page, um, because I didn't know what else to do. You know, I'm working full time and I use a lot of my own revenue and I set aside a certain amount of each paycheck to save, to be able to do this. And any support from anybody is huge. Financially, any partnerships means the world to me, but I know not everyone's able to financially support and that's fine. There's other ways to support me without having to give me money. You know, any prayers, would be absolutely wonderful of just my journey and safety and health in a crazy sport or just following me on social media at Ry Compton or following along with my story or reposting or sharing or sharing with like young women and children and men and military members or whoever, what I'm doing to inspire others, because that's worth it for me. That's a, a payment in and of itself. If we can inspire people through the work that myself and so many other of my teammates are doing. So thank you so much for your support, Ryan, and putting that out there for everyone to know. It means the absolute world to me and anyone who's considering there's so many ways and one way isn't I view higher than the other. A dollar is a dollar. A prayer is a prayer. $500 is $500. It's all the same to me because it's everything is a blessing and I'm so thankful for everything. I appreciate you for being genuine, right? I appreciate that it's not just about the dollar value. It's about understanding that this is your passion. This is what's making you driven and this is what you want to be. You want to be in the limp in the Olympics and, and it's a huge accomplishment, but of course you're going to need support throughout this journey. Right. And so I'm definitely going to be sharing this on my website. I'm going to be sharing this throughout my social media and people that do fundraise towards your fund. I'm going to be doing uh 15% off on all my items at my store location online. And all you need to do is, is make sure you have a donation towards the cause and making sure that you have proof of receipt. And once you do that, by all means, you will be able to redeem this, right? So it's really special to be able to contribute towards your cause because it is a very underrated sport. And like you said, there's so many things that it's in the background that you have to pay out of your own dime, but also like even more than that, right? So I think that it's incredible that you're still not giving up and you're still trying to complete your journey, right? And with your mental resiliency, your toughness and your intelligence is the main reason why I wanted to interview on this podcast, right? I really wanted to try to understand a different perspective, especially someone that's from the military in California, you know, like I'm from Canada, right? So it's a, it's a really nice perspective to understand that, you know, there is female military members that are struggling within the military and they're working hard, they're grinding, right? And there's so many different methods and ways to be successful throughout your whole life. And it was great to be able to hear what you had to offer because a lot of people don't get this opportunity. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to share their emotions or to share what their perspectives are, right? And I think it's incredible to be able to share this on my podcast, but also being able to share it with you. And I really just wanted to say personally, thank you for coming on to my podcast and really trying to make an impact in the world we live in today, right? I do appreciate it. Yeah, Ryan, thank you so much for reaching out to me, scheduling this, all the hard work that goes in behind all your podcasts. 
for all you listeners, thank you so much. Continue to support my man, Ryan, over here. I'm excited to see what guests he has on next and let's continue to support. And if there's ever anyone who's listening that wants to talk about anything, learn more about my story, or not that's faith-based, military-based, bobsled-based, whatever it is, please reach out to me or reach out to Ryan. We'll, we'll point you in the right direction. And uh, we just want to change the world together. Awesome. Thank you, Riley. I wish you well and have a wonderful day. I wish you well. Thank you, Ryan.